Hey there, it's Frank Lesitz. Welcome to a wonderful interview. And it is a wonderful interview. Uh, we're gonna spend time today with Robert Mack. What part of California, Robert? Uh, I'm in Irvine, in Orange County. Irvine, so in Orange County. Klein of Viral, makes videos, has grown his business, and you're gonna hear how he's doing it. So let's get down to it, man. Why don't you tell everyone kind of where your business stands as of right now, Robert? Okay, so I'm a, a team leader for a small team. Um, I've been doing, I've been selling real estate for 14 years. Uh, about six years ago, I realized that the business was just overwhelming with things that needed to be done to really operate it at the level that I wanted to operate at. So adding talented people to my team um, turned into now we have uh, an operations manager. We use you guys viral as our uh, virtual marketing team. Um, we have two sales agents, one new recruit and um, a junior admin that's starting with us in a couple months. So um, we, we sell anywhere from 40 to 50 homes a year. We're always looking to grow. And uh, about 25 to 30 million in volume is what, is what we typically produce per year. Well, oh, because you're in Irvine. Those are expensive houses. Yeah, yeah. So not a lot of sales, not a lot of sales in terms of units for a, for a team, um, but a good amount of volume and always trying to grow. So and leveraging video is really one thing that we're doing to continue to try to grow the business. You had a lot of options to spend your money on marketing and to do your video marketing. Why viral? Um, so I learned about viral about, I think, six, six or seven years ago. And it, was, it, it got to a point where I really wanted to have some type of video newsletter for my database. I started learning as I became more experienced in this business that, you know, the majority of the business that I do and my team does is going to come by way of somebody who already has some type of connection to us. And I was spending a lot of money on finding new business, but I wasn't really spending any money nurturing the people that, that showed me love, right? That supported me, that were there for me when, when I needed them and, I, and they needed me. So I started, to, I started small with just a consistent video newsletter and I started doing research and I learned about viral and I, I looked into it and honestly, it just made sense. I mean, for what was offered, and by the way, you guys do so much more than what you actually offer. It's pretty in insane. And I, I, I don't know how many people actually take you up on that stuff, but I definitely do. But, um, you know, it seemed like a reasonable price. I could afford it. It was in my budget. And I knew that that was actually at least going to give me those two touches per month to my database to start with. That was really what was most important. Consistency was what I was looking for. What results have you seen from all this energy and money you've spent on it to date? So, um, you know, it's funny because I was, I was thinking about this question. I had a feeling you'd probably ask. Um, I don't have a lot of people responding to the videos that I send out. And it's, you know, we always want, I think human nature is we want people to like acknowledge us, right? So I wasn't getting a lot of responses, but I would just find or hear people say certain things like, you know, I've been following you and I've been watching your videos every two weeks for like four years. And then my husband and I decided we wanted to sell and we knew you were the guy to help us, right? So um, in, in real estate with marketing, sometimes it's hard to really pinpoint where the business is coming from. Um, it's, it's usually a la layers of, of touches, right? It might be an email. It might be a video newsletter. It might be a postcard that I mail out. It could be a multiple, multitude of things. And it seems that viral and the newsletter is always in that mix, you know? And I think that's really what is most important to me is, whether people respond or not, I, I, I want to continue to educate. I want to continue to control the narrative and put the word out so that they would consider me as the professional when it came time to buy or sell. When did you make the jump of the marketing and business maturity to go from direct trackable 100% ROI to something like this? You... <sighs> 10 years ago, um, Tom Ferry, one of, my, one of my mentors said, you need to get into video, right? This was that boom with Gary Vaynerchuk and all that stuff. And I remember back in the day, I had my flip video cam and I'd have my tripod and I'd make videos. And so I was already comfortable making the videos, but I had re no real strategy behind it. Um, it was just put out content whenever I had a chance, send it to a couple people with really no distribution campaign um, and, and I knew that video was becoming more and more important. And the great thing is, is not a lot of agents, not enough agents do it. And so I knew that was one more way to step outside, uh, and stand apart from my competition. 
And I, I'm an educator. So before I got into real estate, I was actually a teacher and I taught high school math. And uh, dude, anyone who knows me knows I'm a talker. Like people literally are like, dude, are you tired of talking? Does your jaw hurt? You talk so much. So I have no, I have no shortage of content. I just didn't think as I became more mature and started understanding that truly business comes, consistent business comes via consistent marketing, right? You know, everyone has that agent in their, their, their farm or their neighborhood that sends a piece randomly, you know, but it really takes that consistent marketing. And when I heard about viral, I was like, well, man, I'm recording these videos, I'm editing these videos, I'm putting them on platforms that I think people are watching. I'm not consistent with it all. And when I heard about viral, I was like, this just makes sense for me. As I tighten up other aspects of my business, this just makes sense for me. So when you ask about like that direct tangible ROI, I don't even know if I thought about it that way. It really was just, I have a message. I want to get it out. I'm not doing a good enough job. I obviously need help. And that's what are some of the, connected. What are some of the highest performing video topics that you've published on your blog, Robert? Oh man, I'm so bad. I don't track anything, Frank. Like I, <laughs> I post a video and I never go back to see if it got any feedback or comments. So that's a, a probably a huge faux pas in your world. You know what I mean? But yeah. um, I, I don't really know. I know, I will say this, when I do use, you know, keywords that are, are more searchable than others. So for example, I think I did one where it was like, uh, I, I included Wells Fargo and short sale. And that one got a lot of views because people at the time were searching for short sale information at bigger banks, right? Um, I've done things like, um, will Redfin put us out of business? Those get, those get a lot more hits than the typical, um, you know, three things you should do uh, when you're, when you're going to do a home inspection. You know what I mean? So I think the bigger names attract more people. I've never been able to go viral. Uh, you know, I, I just don't know if the information I'm putting out there is, is sexy sometimes. It's, it's really just, it's consumer based information. Um, you know, a lot of what I talk about is the pain points in the process. I mean, uh, I also like to share success stories because people like hope um, and, and uh, that light at the end of the tunnel. But a lot of times it's, I know people are motivated by pain and I know people have more concerns going into buying a home than excitement. So it's those, you know, the, the real things that happen. So I've got this list in my, in my Evernote of running video ideas. And anytime something goes wrong in my day, I figure out, I think to myself, how could I have avoided that? How could I have gotten in front of that? What is the best way to solve that problem? And then I'll make a video about it. And so a lot of the stuff I put out may or may not relate to people, but I think it helps people understand that, hey, if you work with Robert Mack, it may not be perfect because random things happen all the time, but his team has solutions to get around it. Or oh my God, that happened to me. That's what I should do, right? So it's really just quote unquote, like tutorials, right? Really just helping people feel more comfortable with the buying process or the selling process. Because I'll tell you, if I wasn't in this business, I'd be terrified too. I mean, I just got a new car and I don't get new cars all the time. And I have no idea what to expect. I don't know what they're telling me is true, what's not true. I've got these preconceived conditions in my head that car salesmen are going to take advantage of me, you know, and I'm a salesperson too, but I not knowing enough about that industry creates a lot of uncertainty and fear for me. So I'm trying to help people get through that certainty and unfear through the videos I make. Good, Robert. When it comes to building your database, can you share your top lead generation sources? I would say the top lead gen source for building the database is online leads. Um, we get a lot of those and then, uh, and those funnel right into the database and then um, cold calling. We, we make a lot of uh, cold calls. So uh, the, the people we call are expired, uh, people that have tried to sell in the past and were unsuccessful. And, you know, we call a hundred people. We're going to get, you know, anywhere from three to five numbers or email addresses that we can continue to nurture. Uh, we also do a lot of circle dialing. So if we have a new listing in the area or we set a new record in an area, or we're looking for a property in an area that has low inventory, we'll call the neighborhood and we'll kind of canvas the, the neighbors and have conversations and see we, what we can come up with. And we collect data and we put that in the database as well. So our goal is to add new information into the database every day. 
And um, I would say we probably add two to five people a day in our database. That's wonderful. That compounds. Yeah. Good. Maybe talk about your process of how you shoot a video. I mean, just kind of how you get ready to shoot something that's effective. You mentioned you have a learning list of topics, but now say it's time to shoot a video. What do you do? I just go. You know, I'm just, I, I, I'm fortunate enough to be able to have a conversation on camera and usually get, get it done in the first take. And I know a lot of people struggle with it and there's a lot of great people at it as well. Um, but it's just the typical way it works is Drew, my rep, will contact my assistant. They'll set up a time in my calendar to, to do the video shoot. Uh, the day before I come in, it gives me a reminder. I know that I'm going to shoot one to three videos the next day. I look at my list. I pick a, a few topics and the next day I just come in and I just talk. It's that easy. So my, my approach is I don't want it to look like a video. I want it to feel like I'm talking to you. Like even with my social media, when I make videos, you'll notice a lot of people say, Hey, what's up guys? It's Robert Mack or Hey, my Facebook friends or Hey, Facebook world. People address the masses. And so for me, it's really more, Hey, what's up? Right. Or are you, are you feeling bored today? Right. So when I talk in my videos, yeah. I'm trying to talk to the consumer so that they feel like I'm right across the table from them. That's my, that's my mission with video. When you make these calls, are you prioritizing any of the people that are clicking and watching your videos? Absolutely. Right. So obvi obviously I get that list from you guys that those analytics and it, it talks about, you know, who's clicked on it, who watched it and what other areas of the website they went to great conversation starters. Right. And so it's usually the same people over and over um, with some new people. And it's just, it's another reason to reach out. Right. I mean, in real estate, we get paid based on the number of transactions we close and those transactions are based on the number of conversations we have in a day. Right. So we're always looking for ways to talk to people without annoying them or bothering them. And we want to talk to them <laughs> about things that are relevant to them. Yeah. Right. So one thing on my team is we never check in. Like no one on my team will ever call anybody that we're working. Those with. are the worst. I hate on. those calls. Call check in. Yeah. There has to be some type of value add. Going Give me in. that. Give me the reason. Give me an example of your calling up your database. What's the excuse for the call? Give me a couple of good ones. So for example, we subscribe to the Orange County Housing Report. That's a report put out every two weeks and it's just straight facts and straight data. So every time we get that, we call as many people as we possibly can in the database and share that information with them and say, hey, look, as your real estate agent, we wanna just keep you in the loop. Whether you wanna refinance, whether you wanna buy, whether you wanna sell, whether you have friends that wanna do one of those. We just want you to be educated on the market. And so it's not a sales pitch, it's like really just an educational update. And, and we ask questions, right? So we'll go through the material, we'll ask questions. Do they have any concerns? And it's just, you know, most of our conversations are very organic, you know, but, but going in with that piece, going in knowing that it's like, hey, today we wanna to update you on what's going on. Now, more than ever, that's so important because there's a lot of people that wanna do a lot of things, but there's so much uncertainty with this whole Corona thing. Robert, how many people, how many people do you and your team speak to a day on the phone? I'd say between 30 and 50. That's great. Yeah, These are that, all mostly homeowners or buyers or? Mo I would say mostly clients. The majority of them would be buyers or sellers. Um, a, a larger portion of those people are people that we're nurturing. And then a smaller portion are people that we're actively working with or people that we're getting ready to work with. You guys are on the phone all day. Uh, I would say like between... Uh, an hour to three hours a day. Well, that's not bad to speak to that many people making the calls. Well, we use dialers as well, right? So thank, thankfully yeah. technology has given us the ability to make about 80 to 100 phone calls in a one hour period. Good. So if we just plug those numbers into the dialer, we can just efficiently go through them, have those conversations. The database is open. We update the database. We set our reminders and then we move on. So the goal is to get in. Real estate is a very hectic industry. Anything can go wrong at any time or anything can go right at any time. So we generally try to get everything done between 8.30 and, and like 10.30 in terms of prospecting because after 11 o'clock, the day becomes unpredictable. So you time block your prospecting time in the morning. You're calling people. And when you speak to people, you're saying, hey, can I stay in touch? And you add them to your database and they get your newsletter. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's, 
you know, it's, it's a, it's a seller that's like, Hey, you know, I'm not selling right now, but I might sell in three to five years. Um, and, and we just ask, you know, can we stay in touch? Can we be, do you have a resource? Can we be that person? Right. We, we love to get that like double, you know, you being that you know, email marketing guru is you, the double opt-ins are way better than the single opt-ins, right? Cause you're going to get a higher open rate with those double opt-ins because they actually want it. Yeah. So we're, we're always asking for that permission, but we want to add value. So it's not like, Hey, I'm going to put you on my list. It's really more, do you have somebody that's updating you when you have questions or updating you on the market or does anybody send you a market analysis quarterly so that you know what your home is worth? I mean, I know you don't want to sell it, but like, it's nice to get these quarterly reports. Like, even if you don't read it, like, Oh cool. My house went up a little bit, but there are sites like Zillow that, that do offer that kind of stuff. And it does make it very easy for the consumer. But even Zillow says that they're plus or minus about 10%. Yeah, which is so a lot in your area. It's, it's a ton. I mean, you know, we, we've listed homes for 900,000 that Zillow says is worth like 1.15. And it's like, that's just, it's not, not accurate. So being able to put together a custom made analysis for a client quarterly is a huge value add, I think. And I don't think enough agents do that, right? So that's the kind of stuff that we like to do to separate ourselves from our competition, but it, it truly takes a team, right? Like one solo agent can't do all this stuff on their own, which is why I decided to expand and have people that are smarter than me doing that, those consistent things. Cause I'm a butterfly, you know, I'm running around. I'm, I've got ADD, uh, you know, organization isn't my strong suit. So people that are smarter than me, more organized than me really handle all that. So I can go do what I do best. And you still show up and shoot your videos on time. We hold you accountable to that, right? Barely, but I do, man. I have like Good. a 100% success sh uh, rate for showing up. When I say I'll be there, I'll be there. That's good. That's great. Okay. So I want you to speak to the viewer that has not paid attention to their database at all. <laughs> Go the back to person. the agent. Yeah. So tell me about, speak to that person. What do you want to tell them? So the database is essentially the foundation of any strong business. Um, without that, you really have no data of people to call. So I'm the perfect person to talk about this because I've been selling real estate for 14 years and I got my database, like a real database, maybe four years ago. I did business as a solo agent, winging it, keeping numbers in my phone, writing post-it notes everywhere. I have about, I would say 600 people in my database that I would consider a, a and B clients, people that have transacted with us, people that are friends, family, people that I can call that got my back. And then we have about 3000 people that are, you know, leads that we get online and nurtures. That's just in that four year period. Had I been collecting data from the very beginning and staying in touch with all the people that I had helped prior to having a database, God knows how many more homes I would have been selling per year. And God knows how many people I'd actually have in my database right now. So it'd probably be two to three times larger than it is now. And generally what they say is if you work your database, you'll get about 10 to 15% return on it, right? So if I have 3000 people in my database, I'm expecting to sell, you know, well, not 10%. Let's, let, let's just say like, if I have 300 people in my database, I want to sell 30 homes from that 300 people. Right? So if you do the math, I'd probably be selling two to three times more property. So look, it was a learning experience. Uh, nobody helped me or mentored me to, to, to do that early on. So to an agent out there that doesn't have one, I would say start small. You know, I think a lot of times these database softwares can get very cumbersome and very overwhelming. Uh, start small. When I, when I started building out my database, what I did was I put together a spreadsheet with name, phone number, email, mailing address. And I basically went through every past sale that I ever did that I had any record of. And I put all that information. I went through my phone. I went through LinkedIn. I went through Facebook. I went through so many different platforms that I was using to connect with people, old notebooks, and I put down all the names. And then I filled in all the phone numbers. Then I filled in all the emails and then all the, the mailing addresses, but I had a lot of gaps. So then what I did was I, I spent the next three weeks manually calling everybody to check in, say what's up. 
and then request the information that I needed from them. So if I had their phone number and their email, I got their address. And then I just built it all out and I put it all in and I started tagging it. And over time, we just started adding to it. So from the day that I started to where we're at now, we probably, it's, it probably took us about two to three years to really have a robust database that was actually operating the way it should be operating if you were a small business owner. So if you're an agent that's thinking about doing it, obviously start, start small and then continue to make it better. But without it, you're going to have a really tough time growing your business. Cause like we talked about earlier, the more conversations you have, the, the, the more transactions you'll close and the, the more successful you'll be. And if you don't have a database, then you really don't have anybody to call strategically. Robert, <clears throat> one of my ahas here is you said you have about 600 solid people on your list. Yeah. That's a tight list. Yeah. That's, you know, you do love online lead generation, so you probably have your email list, but your real list is 600. The real list is about 600. And that's, that's my people. Those are, that's my, my, my three agents, people. That's a combined list of like A and B clients. So you're communicating with them on Facebook. So you post your videos there. You're communicating them with email. Uh, are you doing the direct mail program at Viral? The monthly piece of direct mail? I'm not. We have a local printer in Orange County that we use. We put together a, a, a simple, you know, I think it's like a six by nine postcard. But you are using direct mail. We are using direct mail. Good. Yeah. Good. So our, our, our database campaign has uh, several prongs. So um, the email marketing through viral is where we started. Mm -hmm. uh, and then what we did to build on that was we started doing a one piece a month direct mail. And what we did was in the beginning, we were always looking for what, what should we put on the next piece? What should we put on the next piece? And if one thing that we pride ourselves on, on this team is that we have systems for almost everything. And that's because we want to be more efficient in what we do. So after about three months of like, what should we put on this piece? What should we put on this piece? We decided, okay, let's just lay out the marketing plan for it. So we broke it up into quarters. And what we do is the first quarter of the month is the 10 things to do in our, in our county. The second piece of the quarter is some type of social proof, whether it's a, a success piece from us, whether it's a review that a client wrote. And then the third piece is some type of like, you know, here are the five homes we sold this quarter or here are the eight new listings that we just took. So there, there's some real estate in there and then there's some community and fun in there. And then we repeat it in the second quarter and the third quarter. So that goes out once a month. Um, Great. So you're in the two videos a month out. Yep. You're, they're also seeing you on social media. Social the videos media. go there. Uh, you're calling the people who are watching the videos and, we're, we're, and then they're show, and you're showing up in the mailbox once a month. Robert, that's perfect. And we have client events. And you have the events. Yeah. That is the holy grail for a database marketing plan. Yeah. It sounds like you're profitable. We are profitable. Yeah. You're not spending that much money and you're focused and your chances are too. I'm just curious and be honest. Are you running up to a lot of commission pressure? You know, we, we run into commission pressure um, with the younger generations and we run into commission pressure um, from strangers that have no idea who we are, right? The database people, it's like, hey, you, refer, you were referred by so-and-so, we trust him, where do we sign? What do we gotta do to get started, right? So, the, and that's why we love to focus so much on the database because we, you know, real estate's a challenging industry, you know, and if you're dealing yeah. with people that are micromanaging you or if you're dealing with people that are skeptical on your recommendations or they're questioning a lot of things that you say, it gets even more challenging. So being able to work with people that already know us, like us and trust us, uh, they're grateful for our, our advice. It just makes the, the experience that much better. That was very insightful, Robert. Downward commission pressure on the younger generation. I think that, you know, um, when someone has no idea who you are, sure, you're a commodity. Yeah. You know, money flows to differences, not similarities. They spend time with you. They see you from a database you're referred. And even though you may not be doing anything specifically deliverable wise, your perception, your positioning is better. So they, you get paid full commission just yeah. from your database. Yeah. A lot of times it doesn't even come up. We just, yeah. they don't even ask about it. They just want to know what, what, what the next step is. Great. One, one of my old mentors told me a while ago, 
it's eight times more difficult to secure a new lead than it is to just go to your database and ask for a referral. And so, and it's eight times more costly to get a new lead than it is to just go to your database and get a referral. It's like so many, even I was included spending thousands of dollars on Zillow marketing and fighting to close two to 3% of those leads versus spending a third of that on my database and having a party and re you know, reconnecting with everybody and then getting like four or five referrals. Let's leave this interview with you're the perfect example of uh, you had to go through a lot of pain to get your database together. Yeah. You know, it's easy just to load up a dialer and start pounding phone calls or writing a check for advertising. We're like, Oh man, I got to reconnect with my list. And this is going to be terrible having to put together <laughs> the list, yeah. the spreadsheet line by line, let alone you're not that type of a person that enjoys doing anything like that. Why don't you just, let's just leave this interview where someone's like, man, Robert, you're right. I need to get my database together. But, uh, and, and they're probably, they really like the idea how you have six, you basically have a list of 600 solid people in a spreadsheet. Give some people some tips of how to actually get that done. When that sounds like the process of doing that's like putting two pencils in your eyes. Yeah. I mean, look, when, when I, when I told my business coach of three years that I didn't have a database, he, his jaw dropped. And he's like, here's what I need you to do. Stop everything that you're doing. And I want you to focus on your database for three weeks. So look, I, I said earlier, you know, take it slow and, and do this. But the re reality is, is if we don't make the database a priority, it's probably going to take a lot longer to get it done. Right. So I think just acknowledge the fact that this isn't a sexy part of the business, right? It's not fun looking at names and numbers and addresses and organizing them and labeling them. It's not, it's tedious. It's boring for at least for people like me, but if you don't have it, you're leaving a significant amount of money on the table and you're not doing yourself, your business or your clients any justice, right? When you, when you treat your business seriously and you have a way to attract the people that are supporters of you and the people that you're working with, it just makes it more predictable. I mean, I can go on and on about the benefits, right? Yeah. So, I think if we're, if we're really being serious and you really want change, take a break from the business, right? Take a break for two weeks and say, I'm going to come in and I'm going to spend four hours a day or five hours a day on my database because the longer it takes me to do it, the longer it's going to take for me to really take my business to the next level. And so if you, if you're an agent out there and you want to grow and you want to get better, rip the bandaid off, just do it. Right. And go build that list. So, uh, go build Robert, list. I like I like to invite you to my weekly class that's free now. Okay. It's on Monday. Uh, next week, we're talking about direct mail. Awesome. It's every Monday at noon. It's free. Uh, and if you're watching this, go to getviral.com slash classroom. It's designed for the clients, for you, Robert, but I opened up to everybody. But uh, every Monday at noon, if you want to sit back and just chill out, I'm going to give you a marketing lesson to really go really deep with us. Here is the entire curriculum oh, wow. of everything I'm going to teach you. Sound good? Awesome. So this Monday we covered, uh, at the time of this recording, we covered how to properly advertise your video on Facebook uh, to go a little bit deeper on that. But uh, on next Monday, we're going to talk about how to mail a monthly letter to your database. And uh, I think I might want to, and you're already doing this. Um, I like to show you maybe how to use a letter, a personal letter. Yeah, uh, I'd like to learn more about that because I, I consider myself a bit of a storyteller. I know, and, and I can see it. So we're actually going to talk about telling stories in a letter format. And the second page, you're going to get a sponsor. So you get a free ride on the postage. Sweet, man. So that's going to be next week. And then uh, I actually have the lesson plan here. So if you want to come to class, anyone watching this is welcome. This is actually the workbook I'll send you for next week. So I'll be going through all these points on how to get more out of that list of 600. You're a perfect fit for this. Most people don't have like the A's of their list. They have their big email list of, you know, thousands or whatever it may be. But you got that 600 and you want to spend some money on postage and some stamps to those individuals. And maybe uh, if you attend class on Monday, I'll show you how to maybe step it up in the letter. All right. Yeah, that sounds really cool. Sound good? So I'll send yeah. you to that. So Robert, thank you so much. Robert is in Irvine. Uh, how would someone get a hold of you if they have a buyer in Irvine and they want you to work with them because you're awesome? Okay. Um, so the, the best way would probably be email. It's Robert M 
at robertmacgroup.com. It's Mac has a K, M-A-C-K. Um, and honestly, if you have Instagram, add me on Instagram. Uh, my handle is why Robert Mac. It's W H Y Robert Mac. Um, I'm on Instagram more than anything else. So if you want to get a hold of me, I, people know that if I'm not answering my phone, they'd send me a DM and, and they know I'll get it. So uh, that's a great way to get a hold of me. And then uh, Robert's blog, if you want to check it out, is robertmacway.com. The Robert Mac way. Yep. I love it, man. Robert, thank you so much. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. I had a great time.